She's not evil. She's just a badass bitch. Hello, beautiful people. If you haven't noticed, I recently made a sketchbook tour of all my very first sketchbooks from when I was a kid, up to a few years ago. In the very first one, I found what seemed to be my um, OGOCs. Either way, I'm going to redesign them and make them better. Because, I mean, what is this? Okay, okay, I, I shouldn't be mean. Yeah, no, I shouldn't. Our first victim, I mean, character, is this woman right here. And as you can see, I've struggled quite a lot with the pose, because I didn't know what I wanted to go for. Amazing start. So, the original design featured these two beautiful ladies, who are supposed to be the polar opposites of each other. One is very sweet and sparkly, while the other is more uh, aggressive and, I don't know, scary, I suppose. For the first design, I decided to keep the cute aesthetic of it. I wanted this character to uh, almost look like a living candy. I also included the original bandana with the two um, thingies on top. They almost look like ears, I suppose. As for the design of the clothes, I really had to add a little bit more details compared to the original one. So after looking for some references, I set up for this long dress with a nice corset. I also added a bunch of ribbons wherever they would fit, because, I don't know, it, it adds cuteness to the design, you know? Oh yeah, you might see a random instrument appear from time to time, and that's because these two characters are actually meant to be bards. I thought of them as small fairies or pixies, if you will, that will tell along a party of travelers comfortably sitting on their shoulders while singing directly into their ears to soothe their pain. This one in particular is more into classical music, while the other, I suppose, could be more into rock or heavy metal. I kind of want to play Baldur's Gate 3 now with them. That could be an interesting experience, actually. Either way, I ended up not including the instruments this time because I just wanted to show off their outfits. And honestly, I don't think my heart could have handled erasing parts of their bodies and clothes after working for so long on them. I also had the idea of making the instruments semi-transparent and sparkly to give the illusion of them being magical, but the end result would have looked too cluttered with details. So for now, no instruments. They are both just chilling and showing off their booty. I mean, beauty. What is going on with me today? For the color palette of the first character, I opted for a very bright array of pinks, and now it's giving off Barbie vibes. I paired the pinks with some different shades of yellow because it's one of my favorite color combos, but I must admit that it was quite hard for me to work with these colors. I tend to struggle and chicken out a little bit when colors get very saturated. I think it has to do with the criticism I used to get back when I started to draw digitally, since my old pieces were very saturated. That was actually a fair point, by the way, but it made me quite wary of the saturation level of each illustration I made going forward. So this was actually an interesting challenge for me. And I'm pretty satisfied with the end result. Now, for the second pixie, I still tried to follow the original design as best as I could. I think the overall concept that I had as a kid was inspired by the Winx Club, so the good pixie was in fact a fairy, while the supposedly bad pixie was supposed to be a witch. I decided to change the lore a bit, and now they're both good. Even though this one might look evil, she's not evil, she's just a badass queen of rock or heavy metal. I still have to decide. Maybe both. She can, she can just be awesome like that. Anyways, 
I'm actually way more satisfied with their design. I love working with black and white plus red combo. What I don't like working on is metal armor. I have no idea what was going on inside my head when I added those boots, but it is what it is at this point. I, I, I actually don't mind how the silhouette turned out, by the way, and I think they still fit her character well. So I take it as an absolute win. If you're wondering why Diablo is written on a shirt, well, first of all, it was on the original design, and second of all, there is no second of all. I can just assume that the reason why I wrote that back in the day was because I used to play Diablo 3 with some of my relatives and relatives' friends. That was actually a fun time now that I think about it. Nostalgia is hitting hard right now. You know, redrawing these characters made me think of how cool it would be to go back in time to show these illustrations to my 11 or 12 year old self. I think she would be pretty happy to see what we can accomplish now. You know, a lot of the times artists can be pretty harsh on themselves with all the self-criticism. While it's good to be honest with ourselves and pinpoint the weak points in our art to be able to practice and improve on them, I think it might also be good to pause and just look back at what we used to make and how far we've come. Now that I think about it, this can be applied to anything we humans do in life. It's really easy to forget how things were whenever we pursue something for years. Okay, this monologue just became deeper than what I had anticipated. My apologies, let's go back to the main point of this video. The only thing that's left is naming these two characters. I'm not gonna lie, I might need some help with this task, so drop any suggestions you'll have in the comment section. And well, that's it for today. I am quite happy with these redesigns and I might do more of these in the future since I've found so many old characters of mine that I've completely forgotten about. I think they all deserve to see the light again and to get a better treatment because man the things i saw in my old sketchbooks oh, wait i said i wasn't going to be mean anyways thanks for watching stay safe and peace